Do yourself a favor. From this day forward, I don't care if you got a Valentine's Day gift or whatever. Stay away from bare minimum men. Stay away from men who feel like you deserve bottom tier experiences. Stay away from men who want to give you the absolute least and then expect the most out of you. The longer you stay in connection to a bare minimum man, the faster and the closer that you're going to get to the bare minimum version of yourself. That's able to give the bare minimum to just get up every day, bare minimum to not let anybody know how much you're breaking down inside, how empty you are in that relationship, how empty you are in life, period. Matter of fact, you must beware of bare minimum men. You know, we talk a lot about breadcrumbing and how a man will kind of trickle. Y'all do know there are some men who don't consciously breadcrumb you. They literally are breadcrumbers by nature of who they are. They're not saying, oh, let me give her just a little. There are dudes who are who have excuses so ingrained for why they won't show up to the best of their ability that that's just who they are. In their mind, this is what a normal relationship is. Put it on the back burner. Do what you got to do to get her and then let her do all the work afterwards because she's the prize and the man is just the recipient. Stay away from those men. It ain't your job to rewire him, to reteach him, to re-raise him. Because you see all of this good effort and you, you feel like he's really emotional about you and he's connected to. Stay away from bare minimum men. If you have to keep asking that man over and over and over again for the simple things, if you if you look at how he approaches his life in other aspects and you see a lot more effort that goes into his looks, that goes into hanging with his homeboys and impressing other dudes. And if you see all of this stuff, he in the gym. But when it comes to you, you have to pull teeth for the bare minimum. You're dealing with a bare minimum man. I don't care if he's breadcrumbing and trying to be narcissistic. I don't care if he's good outside of the relationship aspect. But with you, you get crumbs. With you, you have to lower your standards. With you, you feel like everything that you give, asking for that to be reciprocated is you having unrealistic expectations. If you're in that situation, more than likely you're dealing with a bare minimum man. Put, put I down in the chat if you've ever tried to love a bare minimum man and you paid the price. Some of y'all right now thinking about Valentine's, how it's gone for you. And at this point, you think, I don't even need no Valentine. Why? Because you've been dealing with a bare minimum man. Y'all want to know the truth about Valentine? It's commercialized. Oh, it's just for money. Oh, it's just for this, that, and the other. Guess what? For a man who wants to love you for any excuse, find any reason, find any uh, additional um, celebration or honoring of you, that man ain't got no problem with Valentine's Day. That man is not over. Oh, I don't care nothing about Valentine's Day. It don't mean nothing. It's just a way for. No, that is bare minimum language. Anytime a dude start talking like that, you need to treat it like poison ivy. It should make you itch and go the other way. Go get your ointment. That is bare minimum talk. If that man truly loves you, I don't care if it's Valentine's Day. You know what? When a guy wants to go all out for you, he'll celebrate the day of the week that y'all met. He'll, he'll celebrate the anniversary for whenever y'all first shared a kiss. Anything. There ain't none of this official holidays. He'll look for each and every crevice where he can insert additional effort, additional investment. He ain't going to be sitting there shunning and finding little ways to, you know, politicize and intellectualize all the ways that everybody else can celebrate it. I'm going to keep it all the way real with you. A a a ain't no, oh, if you don't, you know, if he don't celebrate Valentine's Day, he don't love you. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. And I'm not saying automatically if he celebrates these big days, that means that he does. But just look at the effort. Because on the other hand, sometimes an expensive gift is the cheapest thing a man can give you. Y'all know what I believe. I've been talking about this for the last probably a couple of weeks now here more recently. That the number one qualifier to knowing that a man loves you is how much he invests in you, how much he's willing to sacrifice. Because we think investment is just money. A man can sometimes buy you stuff because he just got abundant money. The man who loves you will sacrifice. He ain't even got that much. He ain't got that much time. But you'll see sacrifice. And sacrifice don't have to always be monetary. Sacrifice can be his ego. Sacrifice can be his time. Sacrifice can be his habits. He normally does things a certain way, but now he's going to switch that up, switch up his morning routine to wish you a, a good morning and send you some words of affirmation because that's what you express that you need. Basically, what I'm saying is don't think just because a man is going to blow a bag on you, that automatically means that he cares for you either. Sometimes that man spending money is bare minimum just to get you out of his face. He got an extra $500 or $1,000, but he gives bare minimum creativity and effort. No, you have every right to say, uh-uh, I need more than the bare minimum. Why did I say? Because look, 
some of y'all may have seen, I just posted on my uh, Facebook and Instagram, I just posted the video of how I showed up for my baby girl. You know, like gave her this, gave her that, whatever. I know what she likes. I tried to, I am intentional about making sure the bar is set high. I don't want bottom tier dusty dudes to be able to reach my daughter. Yeah, I said it, but guess what? I actually caught flack for that video. I brought my baby girl some flowers and all these other things that she might like, you know, candies, a, a little custom card, multiple bears, you know, and I, and I only get to see her at school right now. So I brought her this stuff to school. People in the comments, Derek, you don't want to set no unrealistic expectation. And then she's not going, she's going to be lonely and depressed and she's going to be disappointed. I'd much rather my baby girl be lonely than traumatized. I, I'd much rather her enjoy her own company than to share company with somebody who don't deserve her company. I could be wrong, but I'd much rather set her up for long seasons of being single and alone. Like people act like that's so horrible. Then to be sitting up with the wrong dude in her life, siphoning out her expectations and her standards. Because maybe you're that woman or maybe you've been around that woman that's been hurt so many times and so repetitively that if you talk to her about what kind of love or, or relationship that she wants, it just sounds so abysmal. I talked to a girl one time and she was like, oh, you know what? If a guy wants to cheat on me, I, I, I just I let him do it. I just he, maybe he just got to pay me or something like that. He got to make it worth my time. And I was like, why? And this is coming from somebody who clearly ain't perfect. You know, I got my past. I know what it's like. And even me, I'm saying, why would you settle for that? No. Even if a guy has done these things before, and a lot of men have, it's like, you ain't got to settle for no bare minimum loyalty. You ain't got to settle for bare minimum exclusivity or monogamy. It ain't about nobody being on no pedestal. Like, y'all, we, we have free will. And there are men out here who get to a point in their life where they're no longer doing that. They're no longer moving like that. So don't get it twisted. Y'all get with dudes, and they this is the biggest trip of a bare minimum man. Let me give y'all the game real quick. As your big brother, a bare minimum man will try to shape your perception of all men so that you have lesser expectation of him. What you'll hear from a bare minimum man, this is one of the red flags of a bare minimum man. He'll try to impose on you that this, this, this narrative, this perception of all men as being bad. Yeah, ain't no man really. Yeah, y'all, y'all think people being faithful. Y'all think that y'all think dudes out here really going hard for their woman. Y'all think y'all, y'all, y'all be careful. Any dude who tries to paint all dudes and, and in the interest of reality as being bad, you see, I'm gonna tell y'all what I want you to come uh, come away with from this video with. I want you to look at guys and say, oh, no, 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 there's good and there's bad. I do want to recognize the bad because by recognizing the bad, I free myself for, up, up for the good. But for the guy who says, nah, all dudes on some nonsense, you just got to choose the one that you like. You think you're going to find somebody who bare minimum dude. He's getting ready to give you the bare minimum. He's trying to marinate you for his bare minimum cooking <laughs> and his bare minimum seasoning. That's what he's trying to marinate you. He's trying to prepare you to give you the bare minimum. Why is bare minimum? Why, why is that so dangerous? Again, it kills your expectations. It kills your standards. And you, if you're a real lover girl, if you love love and relationship, if you believe in that, you're still going to show up according to what you're capable of. At least until he kills your spirit. You're going to show up according to your maximum ability because that's how you know love. You can't just re-identify with love just because this man is not able to keep up the standard. And so what happens in a situation is the relationship becomes one-sided. You're going to go so hard for this dude. And in the back of your mind, you will not be able to sleep at night or ignore the fact that he's not doing the same for you. He's a whole man. If anything, he should be the one able to put forth more effort. He should be able to want to show up even more. Aren't we supposed to be the more assertive factor? Aren't we supposed to be the leaders? Aren't we supposed to be the tone setters? We want to set the tone and have the lead when it comes to making all these decisions. But we don't want to set the tone. And have the lead when it comes to raising the standard on the love that we exchange with our partners. We don't want to say, oh, no, that's me right there. Now, I'm not saying, again, oh, I'm talking to bare minimum men. There's no point in even giving them this category, this designation, if there's not a flip side to this coin. Be very much so under the impression that there are good men out here who will go hard for you who ain't looking for just enough to keep you from running away, just enough to keep you from leaving.
Dudes who look for every opportunity to make you smile. Now, again, don't confuse that with the guy who, who you know, your whole world just revolves around him and things like that. No, no, no. Or, you, you know, his whole world revolves around you. No. But the relationship, I'm going to tell you, when you know a guy is not bare minimum, as he's talking, look for signs of him understanding how important that relationship is to his purpose. This is what I told y'all before. A man's going to choose from three areas. His purpose is pain or pleasure. Purpose, pain, or pleasure. Purpose being principles, what he lives by, what he's after in life. Pain being wounded, abandonment wounds, childhood traumas that are unhealed. Pleasure being variety of uh, fleshly desires, just constantly lusting. That, that he's going to choose from one of those three areas. And so, first off, listen for this man to have a purpose. Secondly, listen for how he knows a relationship plays into that purpose. You got to stop dealing with men who don't already have an established purpose that's bigger than what they can achieve by themselves. That's one of the best ways to avoid bare minimum men. That's one of the best. I'm going to give you all this. Like, this is usually stuff I talk my inner circle about. Matter of fact, we just had a conversation last night. And it's really, if you want to know, beware of bitter men was the conversation topic last night. Went in for over an hour. So if you didn't get a chance to catch that conversation, make sure you join the Selfish Season Challenge. Is that the link pinned in the comments or whatever? Join the inner circle. However you see the link, get access to that because that one really got raw. But when we talk about the bare minimum men, the whole series is about men that you need to avoid if you're talking about protecting your peace. You can't protect your peace while inviting robbers into your house. They ain't doing nothing but stealing your peace. A bare minimum man will steal your peace. And the thing with bare minimum men, it's not so overt. It's not so clear. It happens. Decision after decision, day after day, week after week, of you feeling deflated because you were expecting something and it didn't come. Week after week, conversation after conversation of you feeling like maybe I'm asking for too much. I'm not appreciating that he get up every day and breathe and drink water and put on his shoes like a good man. Y'all get what I'm saying? I don't know if y'all picking up what I'm putting down. There are some guys out here who just want you to applaud them and pat them on the back for being a man. And I'm all for you acknowledging and speaking words of affirmation to your king who's continuing to rise to the occasion, who's continuing to be consistent, who's continuing to deliver. No problem with that. But I'm talking about dudes that are like, damn, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I paid the light bill. I paid the light bill. What? I took out the trash. Now you want me to rub your back? You want me to care if you get an orgasm too? You want me to? What the? Yes. Yes. You're not asking too much if what you're asking for is simply reciprocated effort to what you already give. Ain't nothing unre Once you establish that you're capable of it, it, it gets out of the category of unrealistic. Let me just go ahead and disabuse y'all of that notion right now. Ain't nothing unrealistic about something you already doing for this man. And he enjoying it. There ain't nothing unrealistic. That, that includes Valentine. Y'all know it used to be a day where men were known to spoil their woman, trick on their woman, you know, just, 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 just throw everything at it. You know, Valentine's coming up, man. Watch this. Oh, she's gonna be the envy of all her homegirls. I see more women spoiling men than men spoiling women. Y'all think I'm playing? Y'all tell me what y'all see. I see more women going hard. It's women that'll go harder for themselves than what women in relationships are getting from their man. Y'all, I wish I was BSing y'all. I, I wish, I wish I was BSing y'all. So when I saw the sister comment, and let me, let me be clear. I know that the woman, for those who are just coming in, this was really sparked by me seeing a comment from a sister that saw me going hard for my baby girl. She's only seven years old. And I actually went hard for all three of my children, but whatever. Saw me going hard and said, Derek, don't set her up for disappointment. The, 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 the setup for disappointment don't come from the man who's trying to do it right. Who's setting the bar high? The setup for disappointment come from the mugs that's gonna be on some bare minimum. That's the setup for disappointment. So let's go ahead and clear that up right now. And then some of y'all are having to, and I actually applaud this. Some of y'all are having to keep the, the 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 standard high by delivering these things to yourself. What you want that man to do? I I don't care, man. Like I've been on every. Uh, end of the spectrum, financially, mental health wise, y'all, I've been in the darkest of days, the lowest of lows, and I've been the highest of high. If that man cares about you, 
He's not going to settle for the bare minimum when it comes to delivering on you having zero doubt about how special you are to him. He's not going to he's not going to settle for the bare minimum. He's not. Oh, money is tight. And this is one of the things they'll try to pull on you. Like you have bad priorities because you want him to invest in on some level in a nice dinner, maybe a thoughtful gift, something. And they'll make it like you got bad financial priorities that you're wondering why he didn't do that. That's the guilt trip. It's, it's a lot of gaslighting that goes on when a man wants to give you the bare minimum. So you'll hear him say that. But guess what? That man will take that same $150 he could have took to get you at least a decent bouquet of roses or flowers or something like that. At least a little teddy bear, little chocolates, some time to spend to write the, a little poem or something on a card. That same $150, $200 he could have spent on that, he'll go spend it on some shoes. So that his homeboys can say, oh, man, you got the new J's. You got the new. That same money. That same $150, $200 in the beginning before he got the vagina. He was willing to spend that money on a date so you wouldn't put him in the category of broke men that you don't sleep with. But now that he's got you, now that he's hooked you, oh, no, you wanted him to invest is the problem. If a man simply put aside $50, 50 a month. For three months, he ain't even got to think uh, six months or a year out. He can save up enough to deliver something nice on any special occasion. He budget for everything else. The haircut costs $50, sometimes more than that. And he get that, what, every two weeks? If he's a black man, he get that every two weeks? He's spending $100 a month on a haircut. You telling me he can't save 50 a month for three months to make sure on Valentine's? Oh, there, you just being on a pedestal and whatever. I... I'm, I'm your big brother. I'm not your expert or guru. You do whatever you want to do. And this is for any man watching this, man. You want to fumble that good girl? You want you want to fumble her trying to convince her that everybody online, everybody around her is just faking and buying into the hype and all these conspiracy theories about why they man is putting in effort. But you, man, go ahead and fumble it. That's your business. Any woman out there, I'm your big bro, but I'm going to let you make your own decisions too. You so entrenched in his soul tie with this man that you looking for ways to justify him playing right in your dog on face? Go ahead, do you. But for those of y'all who know that you deserve more than the bare minimum, I'm here to tell you, you ain't crazy. You ain't asking for too much. Again, beware of the gaslighting. Another way that he'll gaslight you is acting like, you know, you just so, you, you so trying to compete with everybody else. Oh, you compare yourself to everybody else. You just want, you want to be like everybody else. What about, you know, the other day when I wiped down the counter? What about that? I ain't hear you appreciate that. You want appreciative, but you're looking at everybody online. Gaslight you. Like your, you, your priorities are out of order because he's not treating you like the priority that you are. Y'all ever heard some of these gaslighting statements, gaslighting, twist arounds, reverse psychological nonsenses? So you can lower your, the end result is always that you lower your standard from a bare minimum man. There's nothing that he's going to say that's going to encourage you to raise the bar. Nothing. Everything is going to end with you now from this point forward saying, let me not ask him for this anymore. Let me ask for less going forward. If he feel like you ain't deserve it, he should just say that. Just have the balls to say that. Let you choose whatever you want to do with that information. But all that gaslighting manipulation, I'm here to give you the, the tools so you don't fall for it at least. From there, it's on you. This is just what I, I'm giving y'all a piece of what I give to my inner circle, those that are in the selfie season challenge right now. Because I know this, it is the season. And with that being said, know the, the dangers of bare minimum men that by way of their identity, how they're wired, they will breadcrumb you. Because like I said, on the out on the other side of that is them hanging on to you long enough to pull from you and make a one sided relationship to where at some point you get depleted and your cup run empty. If these bare minimum men was just out here roaming in the wild, existing and minding their business, I wouldn't have nothing to say about them. I, I, I would I would tell you, man, leave them alone. They're doing their thing. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Staying out your face. But whenever you get bare minimal men these days, what they're doing is they're coming and they're presenting one thing, all the effort, all the time, all the allocation and priority of energy. And then, boom, whenever they got you, they fall back and they got nothing but excuses. Y'all ever notice when you get with a guy, when you start talking to a guy, he on his grind. He ain't got no women. And then when you get in a relationship with him, ain't no grind. It's just all women. 
Put I down in the chat if you ever notice. It's funny how that works. I'm just getting to the money. I ain't got no women. I ain't got no roster. And then as you get in a relationship with them, ain't no money. Just roster outside of you. Put I down in the chat if I'm talking to you. It's all gaslighting. All gas. And you know what? This is something I learned in my younger days. And I look, I had to learn the hard way. I don't come as no perfect guy. Hey, look, I noticed this. If you don't have enough priority on your relationship, that's a lot of times where all of that opening, all of the, the, the vacancy in your mind, your mind wandering, your thoughts, want, that's where that come from. A lot of guys, and this is for the men, and it's not a large group, but I also want to be as thorough and conclusive, uh, inclusive as I can be. A lot of guys will say, well, I want to do the right thing, man. I just have a hard time coming from singleness to this. It's just tough. I'm going to tell you this. Give you all this. This changed my life. Put more intention, more priority, more investment in your relationship. You don't even have time to think about that. Whenever you think you're thinking about another another chick because you're just so used to it, I get it as men. We get used to this type of thing, this kind of you know variety. But when you come into a relationship, you don't know how to handle that one person that shows up for you. You have not yet developed it to the man that can uh, uh, appreciate loyal a loyal woman as opposed to a new woman. I'm keeping my language as clean as possible here. Put more energy into that relationship. Two things are going to happen. One, you're going to develop in that relationship, which you should have done this before you even got in it, but cool, you in it now. You're going to develop it to that man who has the, the appreciation necessary to keep yourself focused. Two, you're going to bring out a different version of that woman that makes you wonder why you ever thought variety was lit. You're going to bring out a different version of that woman. Now, should your world revolve around her? No. Have your mission. God, what God got you to do on this earth and you've established that, have your mission number one, okay? If y'all are not married, have your kids number two, wherever that is. If y'all are not married, if y'all married, she, the kids got to come under the wife. After that, before your pleasures, before your hobbies, before your uh, just sleeping in in the morning, have your woman there. She should still be very high on the priority list. So in your downtime, your free time, you should be thinking, man, what's that thing that she said that she liked? What I saw her putting in her cart, but she held on to because she wasn't quite ready to pay for it just yet. What's that What's that gym that she said, mm, I think I might want to get a membership there. I, you know, I've been thinking about losing weight. What kind of things has your woman mentioned? And that she might have thought you weren't even listening to. What kind of thing? This is where you can put your mind at. And this will help keep you focused. I got this from one of my mentors. And this was after me learning the hard way. You can get it the easy way if you're wise. Think about it. What was your, what was your woman looking at real hard whenever she was scrolling? You ain't got to go through your, your girl's phone or nothing like that. Just kind of while you're close to her, you see what she's scrolling on. We see what website she on. You look in her, her closet, there should be a consistent color that you see that she's choosing whenever she's choosing clothes. Go in there, know what size that she wear, know what color she normally get, and go see if you find something else. Put your, put your spare energy, your spare time to something like that and watch the version of the woman that you produce. Not even that you're going to get it right every time. Sometimes you might get her some stuff. She'd be like, oh, you don't know fashion at all. But what she's going to notice is that you have now ascended beyond the bare minimum. She already going to give you the maximum she's capable of. What you're about to do is introduce her to a higher level she's capable of than what she even thought she could go. And then with that, what you're going to do is you're going to receive this. Y'all think you're receiving a prize? Wait till you overwhelm this woman with love overwhelm her with priority overwhelm her not in a clingy sense again keep your first things first god your mission in life if y'all are not married your kids and then her but go out your way to find ways to add value to that woman and watch what happens boy the softness and that woman, let me tell you, let me, I can't get raw with y'all. I know it's, man, hopefully the kids sleep by now. Man, that, that, that everything on her body is going to be more ready for you, more receptive to you. You think you're spoiling that woman. Watch how much she's ready to spoil you. Not just physically, but watch how much she's ready to speak affirmations to you, whatever your love language is. Watch how hard they go. This is a thing with a woman. No matter how good we are at our absolute best, a woman is, she's hardwired to show up better than us in a relationship. Now, we should be showing the effort that leads the way. But the woman's execution of meeting your needs is always going to be better because she's in her feminine. She's more in tune. She can see what you want and need without you even saying anything. You see, a woman to try to guess with us what we need, and they'll know better than us what it is we need. 
to keep us healthy, to make us smell good. That's how that's why women get with a dude so many times and level the man up because she already knows better than him. A lot of stuff that he needs to be on, the colors he needs to wear, the type of suits he needs to be on, the grooming of, you know, the cologne. She she already can peak. She can show up better than him for himself. Matt, ladies, put I down in the chat. If you saw a guy at some point and he was operating at one level and you raised his attractiveness to other women, not just while he was with you, he passed through your life. Y'all didn't work out. But from that day forward, because he listened and adapted to what you was telling him to do, he became a more attractive version of himself. He paid more attention to his grooming. He chose better cologne. He stopped posting certain things that made him look dusty. Something that you told him, hey, that ain't it. Uh, that, you know, that ain't that ain't the move. Women don't like that. Women don't, women don't like all that hardcore drug dealer music on your page and Women don't like whenever you talk like this on small talk. Like, it could be a homeboy or it can be your relationship partner. Put I down in the chat if you ever upgraded a guy's attractiveness to other women. He had more success with women after dealing with you. So what I'm saying is we're counterproductive as men whenever we give the bare minimum. We think we're preserving something. But what you lose now is on what you would get from that woman if you was to go as hard as you can go. Now, I try to be as balanced as possible. To my ladies out there watching this, if your man genuinely ain't got money, his over and beyond the bare minimum is not going to look financial. That man ain't about to go get you no Van Cleef if he's struggling right now. If, if things is just real right now and his finances, he's not about to go get you no $50,000, $20,000 gift. OK, so let's be real. But what you're going to see from that man who cares about you, he already know what his finances look like. Typically, these types of things ain't new on a, a, a special holiday or anything like that. He gonna already be thinking, how can I be more creative here? What can I write for her? What can I draw for her? What can I cook for her? How much can I can I put aside? It might not be twenty dollars. If he starts six months early, that's one hundred and twenty dollars he can spend on you. What can I do? What can I do? Maybe I can do a bubble bath. Bubble bath only costs a couple of dollars. That you know what I'm saying? You go, you go to Target or something like that. You get your little bubble bath, run a little bubble bath and your foot rub or something like that. He might can't pay for a five hundred, six hundred dollars spa treatment for the day, but he put that thing together, get you a little foot soak or something like that. That's what it looks like. I want to be clear because I'm not saying I'm not broke shaming. I'm not broke shaming saying if that man ain't got money, he's bare minimum. No. I'm saying that man's effort is going to show up one way or another if he cares about you. If he does not hate you, you will not be left feeling like I'm asking for too much. I'm asking for something so simple and I gave it to him. We expect women to put together all of these complicated recipes and replicate Ruth Chris at the crib, replicate porn stars at the crib, do all of this stuff. And then all they get in return is excuse after excuse as to why we're going to give them the bare minimum. I just think that's asinine. Maybe I'm crazy. But I need something to be clear also to you ladies watching this. If you've dealt with a bare minimum guy a couple of them, and it got you to a point where you got frustrated with dating, didn't want to date no more, not even looking forward to love no more because it seems to always come with disappointment at some point. I'm here to tell you, don't give up on love. There are men out here who do go over and beyond for their woman because they're smart enough to know, they're involved enough to know what happens whenever they do that. But, but, one thing I've seen women mess up on is forgetting that these men have a very specific palate. And no, it ain't your dress size. No, it ain't how many children you got by whatever. The palette is all based on your overflow that you have available. Your overflow is going to start with your belief. Your overflow is going to start with your faith because that is co correlated with your receptiveness. You can't be receptive to this amazing man with over and beyond type of love and skills and evolution if you don't even believe men are capable because now you've bought into the nonsense program and that bare minimum Dusty's got you on. And so with that palette has to be developed. A lot of women make this mistake. Oh, whenever he comes, then I'll turn it on. No, you won't. You will struggle. You will have, I've seen it over and over again. And one of the worst things, one, the only worst thing than being mishandled to take it for granted is finally receiving that man who's ready to blow your mind with the love he gives you 
but you the one that's not ready. The pain from that and these women that have come to me, Derek, I, how do I get them back? I, I I wasn't ready for him. I was I was so I didn't I didn't know Derek. I didn't know the the pain. Because while men today think they the prize, let me tell you something. Evolved men who have really done the work, who have gone through that process and gotten to the other side of themselves that had no discipline, that had no perspective, that had no purpose or priority. Those men are honestly short in short supply. They exist. Single ones exist too. But those men are in short supply. I ain't here to lie to you. I'm your big bro. Y'all can get mad at me all you want to. But I know there's some women, there's, there's a select few women who going to hear what I'm saying. So what does that mean for you? That means for you, in the time where you have now cut off the Dusties or you're trying to cut off the Dusties who are doing bare minimum, you also have to couple that with a season of selfishness where you reestablish the standard for yourself. And no, it don't look like just buying yourself stuff or taking yourself on trips. It don't look like just staying isolated until your body and your mind no longer craves just somebody to say you got somebody. It also looks like a set of effective strategies to refill your cup that was left depleted for so long. And once you do this effectively, it will reset the tone and now emit the energy to those evolved men who want a woman like you. That, that's, that's, that's the whole of it. Now, again, you can do the selfish season however you want to. I have guided women, I don't know how many thousands now, the, the, the testimonies are pouring in over the last month. But if you want access to the exact same strategies that I've given out, including my book, From Heartache to Happiness, which is not available to the public because I know somebody going to ask Derek, how can I get it on Amazon? It ain't on Amazon. This is strictly for those who are taking the selfish season challenge and it comes included with the selfish season challenge. So that is at the link pinned in the comments or in the caption whenever you see it. The big brother advice you never knew you needed. Saving lives out here. But an effective selfish season where you take that time and you reset. It's essentially a spiritual, mental, emotional detox. And then rejuvenation, like re-putting in those vitamins that were there when you first had the belief in men, while equipping you with the discernment from your big bro on how to weed out those men who don't deserve this version of you. And that's going to put you in position. That's going to be like a magnet to those men who are equally yoked. But no matter what you do, because you ain't got to join the Selfish Season Challenge, this cool do you. I want you guys to do this for me, though. Beware of bare minimum men. If, if you don't do nothing else. I got people warning me about my daughter being uh, disappointed by how much I've risen her standards and expectations. I, I need more of y'all be wearing a, a bare minimum men. Stop procreating with these guys that create bare minimum little boys. Y'all get it right. And y'all get with these men who are yearning for y'all, who have worked on yourself, putting in that work on yourself. Ra raise up some sons, train them up so I can match make with my daughter in about 15, 20 years. And we don't have to worry about this. <laughs> if you got value from this, because I'm your big bro trying to help you out, look out per usual. If you got value from this, hit the share button for somebody else so you can help somebody else avoid bare minimum men. You don't know who you blessing whenever you hit that share button, but hit that share button. You'll be surprised to find out. I'll let y'all later. And again, if you want access to my selfish season challenge, and that includes the conversation we just had last night for over an hour about how to beware of bitter men. Men that hate on successful women, growth-oriented women, you're not going to miss that one either. Click the link you see pinned down here in the comments or wherever you see a pin. I'll let y'all let y'all be good, man. Peace.